Hi, everybody. It's Joe Chaffee on this uh, Saturday. <clears throat> As uh, I'm up in northern Connecticut, uh, I'm somewhere in this green area here uh, with regards to uh, what we had with snow, which was basically about maybe a coating to a, perhaps a half an inch, and it's all gone now anyway. But the uh, storm in the east really producing some big snows across part of New ha parts of New Hampshire into southwestern Maine. Uh, there are a, a number of areas that got well over a foot in some places pushing up to 15, 16 inches. And it's still snowing uh, up in this area here from uh, northern Massachusetts uh, into Vermont, uh, eastern Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, and into Maine. So there are going to be uh, uh, some uh, more accumulations as far as that is concerned. So uh, th this storm is, you know, winding down. Uh, rainfall amounts were pretty solid across New Jersey, Long Island. Uh, southern New England, the Hudson Valley, eastern Pennsylvania, back down into Maryland and Virginia, you know, on the order of a couple of inches or more in some places. The other thing I want to point to, uh, uh, point out is for tomorrow, and we mentioned this over the last couple of, day, of days of the possibility of a very uh, important and strong severe weather outbreak. The Storm Prediction Center from the National Weather Service is indicating a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms in southeastern Texas and southwestern Louisiana for Sunday. And based on what the models have been saying for days, this is not a big surprise. Uh, already seeing you know moist tropical Gulf air getting getting in here as a storm is going to be developing uh, over uh, southeast uh, over southern Texas and then moving northeastward from there on Sunday. So uh, all the ingredients are here for a, a pretty nasty severe weather outbreak. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center talking about the possibility of supercells and uh, tornadoes. So uh, we're gonna be paying attention to this uh, as we uh, go through the weekend. And here's the actual Storm Prediction Center's map uh, and you know, separately. And in fact, I just wanna see if I can pull up um, the headline on this because they did have a headline uh, on their page there it is. So this is this is today's uh, where the slight risk is further west with the marginal risk uh, back through Texas and a larger area of uh, thunderstorm risk. And, you know, what they're saying for tomorrow is organized severe thunderstorm development expected across parts of East Texas into West Central and Central Louisiana uh, Sunday through Sunday night. Risk for torna tornadic supercells, a few of which could be strong, along with considerable potential for damaging wind gusts and an evolving squall line. It makes total sense from, from, from what I've been looking at. And if you want more information about this, uh, you certainly can go to their website, which is spc.noaa.gov. Okay, so that's spc.noaa.gov. Now, let's look at the satellite loops this morning and, and show you, we've got three storms here. You got this one, uh, the old Atlantic Gale Center is now well east of Newfoundland. Here is the storm that is now moving, has moved off the New Jersey coast and is tracking to the east. So the uh, what we would call the calm ahead of this storm with the more intense, most intense precip is still impacting uh, Maine and eastern Vermont, although it will start winding down from west to east and also impacting north, northern, northeastern New Hampshire and southwestern Maine. So they're getting hit uh, with additional snows today. Here's the next system right now back uh, in through the central Rockies that's going to eventually translate itself southeastward uh, over uh, into Texas. Beautifully dry in the southeast and over Florida outside of just some patchy clouds in South Florida. Uh, we've got drier air that's advancing into the eastern part of the United States to make for a nice Sunday and Monday. And out in the west, here's the back edge of that next uh, energy that's, that's moving out of the Rockies and will move uh, into Texas. And in the meantime, uh, we've got just some um, high and mid-level moisture coming into the Pacific Northwest into southwestern Canada. There really isn't too much going on uh, in California. So the West is getting a bit of a break here. Uh, radar views today, and there's that comma head I was talking, talking about in the east. You can see the radar echoes. This is all going to be winding down, though, as we go through the afternoon. The, the back edge of the heavy snows are starting to pull slightly southeastward, so that's going to continue. Uh, meanwhile, you look at the southeast and across much of the Gulf states, it's pretty quiet at the moment. Uh, but back out uh, into the Rockies, we go and into parts of the Central Plains, and we've got some 
showers and a few thunderstorms there, extending from Nebraska down into Kansas. And we also have some uh, some weather and some snows for parts of Colorado, which is good because they've been very, very dry. I don't know if it's going to get into northern Colorado. And then out in the west, other than some showers that are coming into the Pacific Northwest, the west looks pretty dry. So let's see what we have going forward with regards to uh, the evolving weather pattern. And I have the new GFS uh, out uh, to uh, tomorrow evening. And you can see this, this outbreak very well on the models as low pressure develops uh, in eastern Texas right here. Uh, and, you know, there's a, one low back here, another low that it, the model wants to uh, extend up into uh, uh, western Mississippi. But there's this huge area of strong thunderstorms that evolves in East Texas and then into western Louisiana and eventually into Mississippi Sunday night into Monday morning. So I think this is going to be a newsworthy severe weather outbreak for sure. Meanwhile, here in the east, high pressure and control, so it's nice and dry. Uh, not too much happening uh, out in the west but you know we've been talking about the fact that this is a very active pattern and this is just good and this is going to continue now going forward um, one system after another continues to come in from on the that Pacific jet so here we are for Tuesday that system coming out of Texas now rides up the east coast with more significant rains for the mid-Atlantic and the northeast and maybe some more snow this time it's going to not won't be as cold ahead of it so it, the snow may just be confined to um, much of Maine and maybe a little bit into uh, central and northern New Hampshire and that's it. Now we have uh, on the models uh, a fairly significant low uh, for Tuesday and Tuesday night developing in North Texas near the Oklahoma Panhandle and, and it does produce some significant snows back through parts through, through Colorado and rain uh, on up from Kansas northeastward into Iowa. So uh, that's that's uh, that might be some good news there uh, for the very dry areas in the central Rockies. You know, then that low moves east. And again, what's happening here in the eastern part of the United States is that we've been getting storms every three days. So uh, this one will pull out Tuesday night, Wednesday and Thursday look dry. And then by late Thursday, even it may, may be a little faster this time around, uh, the models want to take a low up uh, into the Great Lakes, a fairly strong one. And I think that by the end of this week, we could wind up with the potential for strong thunderstorms up and down the East Coast with this, if this strong low does indeed track up to our west like this, uh, looks like a very strong uh, southeast, south, south, southeast gale situation setting up uh, for the uh, eastern seaboard here on uh, Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. So this could be, there could be some significant rains and thunderstorms with this. In the meantime, uh, by the end of next week, looks like the relative calm period uh, in the West uh, gets broken as something more significant comes into the Pacific Northwest. Um, and after that, that's going to start translating eastward at some point, although I'm not sure how, how yet. But again, at least through the first part of the first 10 days of April. We have a lot of storminess ahead of us uh, through the eastern uh, part of the U.S. and in, in, into the Northeast. So let's look at the upper air pattern and try and figure a few things out with this. You know, one of the things I kind of noticed yesterday, you know, at least with the GFS, is just this, this uh, blocking that's trying to develop up, uh, in, 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 up, up in the northern areas, uh, in, in the North Atlantic. And indeed, you know, as we go into next week, you start to see, you know, rising pressures uh, in, that, in that area. So you continue to have this displaced, strong Pacific jet. It's just endless here with one, with these weather systems just kind of riding along. And they're pretty intense, too, for this time of year, certainly. Uh, they're, they're really... Uh, showing some pretty good strength in the upper layers of the atmosphere. So as long as this is the case, if we continue to see these, you know, above normal temperatures and relatively warmer air aloft uh, in the uh, polar regions and areas to the north, that's just going to continue to just displace this Pacific jet to the south. I honestly think that by the time we get through the middle part of the month, you know, this whole concept of the, the drought situation that, that, has been in the northeast and, and mid-Atlantic states to some degree um, may be gone. 
uh, given that we're getting these storms every two or three days. I mean, that's that's something that we really haven't seen in the last year and a half because of the domination of the pattern by the uh, El Nino uh, of um, a, a year and a half ago and the weak La Nina, I guess, maybe have had some impact. Or it could have just been that the El Nino needed, it was so, so ex big and so strong that it just needed uh, more time for the atmosphere to work out the excesses. I mean, look at this. This is going into the middle part of April here. This is really a cold look for the East uh, when you have this deep trough uh, and a flow out of Canada. You know, where was this in January, uh, to tell you the truth? I mean, you've got everything set up here for colder than normal temperatures uh, right through the middle part of the month. And, and this time of year with the strengthening sun, that means storminess. I mean, this is a very unusual pattern if the model is correct on this. So it'll be uh, very interesting to see how this this is all going to play out. Again, for the short term, I think the most important aspect uh, to focus on will be uh, tomorrow with the Storm Prediction Center uh, and their moderate risk of severe weather uh, that they are forecasting uh, for uh, Southeast Texas and for Southwestern Louisiana. I honestly think that this could be a, a pretty serious outbreak of uh, severe thunderstorms uh, for tomorrow. Uh, we'll uh, get, we'll get keep a close eye on this. Um, you know, severe weather season uh, is really, this this severe weather season, you know, the last few years, the severe weather season uh, has, um, you know, not really produced very much. I mean, there has been severe weather, obviously, but in terms of long-term averages, if you go back over the last five or six years, I mean, we've been kind of on a downswing, but, you know, it seems to be really picking up um, the activity is picking up this year to a large degree. And if you have that upper air pattern the way it is uh, with all that uh, that strong Pacific jet coming along with these strong disturbances moving across the country, we're going to see this uh, continue. So uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell today. Uh, we'll uh, keep you updated, of course, on all the goings on on the website, meteorologistjoechoffee.com. And also be sure to check Angry Ben on nycweathernow.com because he has all the latest regarding how this how weather impacts New York City and areas surrounding New York City. And thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. If you're new to my YouTube channel, just hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a dime. And you get notifications uh, every time a new video goes up, which is at least once a day. So I'm up in the mountains of northern Connecticut. I'm going to spend a little time this afternoon just taking in some of the sights and relaxing. You folks enjoy your Saturday and have a great weekend. And uh, we will talk to you probably around this time tomorrow or maybe a little bit after that. I might wait for the European model to come in and uh, we'll, we'll see what that has to offer us as far as the future is concerned. Have a great weekend.